one slide here, but for those of you who may not know us well, uh, just a little bit of orientation. We are, uh, we have the understated mission of redesigning long life. So it's a, it's a pretty big, uh, a pretty big task, but um, we are, I think, if you're in this room, you probably understand that we are in a very new era uh, when it comes to populations uh, and aging, and that uh, lifespan in developed countries has doubled essentially since the beginning of the 20th century, and that's, as uh, my, our leader, Dr. Uh, Laura Carstensen, will often say, that's a greater extension in uh, expected lifespan at birth than <coughs> over the rest of human history. Uh, and <coughs> culture and our society haven't necessarily kept up with that, and that's, that's a challenge. And we look to make, um, we, we look to, go ahead and advance one more. Um, Laura has said before that the extent that people arrive at old age mentally sharp, physically fit, and financially secure individuals and societies will thrive. And what that really means is that the conversations that we all have about uh, problems and you know, what are we going to do with all these old people become conversations about opportunity and about uh, about how you know these people can remain part of society, remain active, and remain productive and happy. Um, so I've already thrown her name around a couple of times, but uh, Laura um, is the director and the founder of the center. Uh, she'll be speaking in just a couple of minutes, so I won't say too much more there. Uh, the center's been around since 2006. I don't 2007 is when it really got kicked off. I think there was a, uh, an internal Stanford faculty group that was working in 2006 to define it. Um, Dr. Parsonson is a professor of psychology, uh, known very much for her work at how people age emotionally and cognitively. Um, our, our deputy director is Dr. Tom Rando, who's a neurologist and a stem cell biologist, works on uh, basically making old muscles work and heal more like young muscles. Um, the real horsepower for the center, because we are a very small center, uh, we are an independent research lab at Stanford, meaning that we don't fall into any particular department. Um, and we are fairly small, about a dozen people. But I, I sometimes get about it being you know, a, a small group with the biggest, with the best backroom research group in the world. Um, we, we have about 150 faculty now around Stanford, really representing all the schools at the university, uh, who have looked at our mission, say that they believe in it, and have made themselves and their research available to us as we try to engage them on the, the practical outcomes of how we can really engage and to try to, to make real changes into, uh, into long life. Um, underneath that, that um, saying, we have three divisions, the mind division, mobility, which I direct, and financial security, uh, and that's the way we're organized. And I think that's probably all I'm going to say on, on the center. Um, I want to recognize uh, Agent 2.0, who has been our key collaborator on this, this effort, and we are in our, our second year, and sort of since the conception in the beginning, um, you know, Aging 2 has been, been in there and working with us very, very closely, and we thank them for their help uh, and their partnership, and you'll see quite a few Aging 2 people wandering around and talking today. And I think Stephen's gonna give a little more introduction to Aging 2 later on today. So we certainly can't run an event like this where we can bring people in and from around the world, um, where we have the opportunity to uh, really grow the scope of this beyond, beyond the boundaries of Stanford and make it a worldwide challenge. And I'd really like to take a moment to recognize the people who are making that possible. Um, so first off, um, the new retirement forum, Russ Hill um, has been there since the very beginning. It was the original guy who said, this is a good idea, let's, let's get this going and, and allow us to actually get that kicked off. Um, I'd like to thank our gold sponsors who um, this year, I was excited to see if we've gone beyond the boundaries of aging services, right? I mean, we are talking about names here that are really associated with very large, uh, very large uh, missions and not just aging people. So, you know, we have AARP, uh, Orange and Orange Healthcare. We we're excited to now see more engagement, you know, from a primarily European operation. Um, Davis Finney Foundation, which really I think sees mobility uh, as a key to helping people with Parkinson's disease. Uh, the Target Corporation, probably don't need a whole lot of introduction there. Um, and we thank you for, for your uh, sponsorship. And our silver sponsors, Clear Care, um, Home Care Assistance, who I point out is here again this year, and we thank you for your continued support, Lily. Uh, and then uh, the Tidewell Program at the University of California in San Francisco. And 
it, I love the opportunity to work with you know UCF UCSF on this and to, to get more uh, universities engaged. So if I, we can take just a minute to give a round of applause to the sponsors. Um, we also have some other folks that have helped us out. Uh, LG Electronics, who I think you'll hear from later in the panel discussion, Tau Wellness and Skill. You know, LG and Tau made uh, their products available to some of the design teams at no cost um, and gave them platforms to design around, which was new this year. Uh, did get picked up a lot, but I think it's something we'd like to continue to build on because I think we know that the amount of devices that are now coming out in the interest of these sort of activities uh, it is really a big trend, and, and we're happy that they were willing to jump in and help us. Skilled is the platform on which we run the, uh, the challenge. Um, and then we have uh, the International Council on Active Aging, and Colin Milner's here from that, from that, and one of our sponsors, and they really helped us. They have a, a very large reach from a, a marketing perspective and have given us some visibility that we just wouldn't have gotten otherwise, so thank you. Another uh, role that we need here are judges. I mean, this is, this is a competition that uh, reaches very broadly, and I think reflective of that, we have a very broad group of judges. Um, I think in the interest of time, I'm not going to introduce everybody individually, um, as we're already having an opportunity to run a little bit longer. Um, but I'll just give you a minute to take a look at the um, look at the list of judges and just you know appreciate the fact that these folks you know are taking time out of their pretty busy schedules to come here today and be part of this. And I just want to thank you for doing that. So, um, the next thing I want to talk about was a little bit of late breaking news, and it really just was announced on Tuesday. Um, it, but I'm excited to say that the Global Agenda Council for the World Economic Forum on um, Artificial Intelligence and Robotics has come in and stepped up, and they are sponsoring, along with Qualcomm, um, a special prize for the best technology solution from today. Um, they're, I think, really attracted to the idea that younger people around the globe are getting involved in, in working on an issue that really reaches across society. They see the importance of that. And in recognition of that, uh, there will be a $5,000 prize for the best technology solution. But probably more exciting uh, is they're also going to be giving the opportunity and sponsoring the travel for that winter to travel to Dalian, China in September and present at the um, the annual meeting of new champions, which is generally recognized as the second largest WEF event after um, after Davos. So we're very excited about that and thank them for, for stepping in. Oh. Okay. So uh, with that, I, I've got a couple of people who would uh, like to like to just say a few words of welcome. Um, the first person I'm going to ask to uh, step up is Laura Carstensen, the director of the Center on Longevity, and uh, my boss. <laughs> well, one of the first things I want to say after welcoming you all here is thanks to Ken. Um, he, his leadership is making this happen, and um, I am very, very grateful to you, Ken, and to all of the staff at the Center on Longevity uh, for all the work that goes into this uh, event. Uh, we're talking about it and working on it all year long now, so it's, it's a, great, um, a great part of the Center on Longevity. Um, I also want to thank our sponsors, uh, the judges and the students who are really fueling uh, this exciting endeavor. Um, we are changing culture here. Uh, everybody in this room by virtue of being here today, talking about these issues, uh, having the conversations not only here, but back at your respective institutions. Uh, th this is changing the way we think about human aging. I also want to give a special thank you to Russ Hill and the New Retirement Forum for the conversations that led to this whole challenge and for your uh, support for, for this and so many other things at the Stanford Center on Longevity. We're incredibly grateful to you. Thank you, Russ. Um, Ken said that our mission is to redesign uh, long life. Uh, our mission is to fundamentally change the nature of human aging. 
Well, sometimes people laugh at that. Um, uh, but that really is what we're after. Now, aging is a biological process. It is fundamentally biological. Uh, but culture steers the course. And in fact, it was culture that resulted in these added 30 years of life. It had nothing to do with uh, uh, natural selection or evolution. We're really no genetically hardier or different than our ancestors were 10,000 years ago. But we are stronger. Our organs function better. Our brains process information faster. <laughs> we are healthier. Uh, we are functionally able into more advanced ages than any of our ancestors before in human history, and this is a product of culture. Culture handed us today 30 extra years of life with essentially no strings attached. Here it is. And so far, we've been tacking all those extra years on at the end and complaining about the burden older people will place on society. What we want to do in this room is to say, OK, we got these 30 extra years of life. Now we're going to use culture again. And of course, culture includes science and technology and behavioral norms and social practices. We're going to change culture so that these added years of life improve quality of life at all ages. Technology is key. It was actually agricultural technology that reduced malnutrition that led to the kind of hardiness that we're seeing today in humans that allow us to live and function as well as we do. Many young people today will sort of chuckle about technology and say, well, older people, they're not so great with technology. It's like the elderly today live through more technological changes than any generations before in human history. I mean, they went from horse and buggy to airplane travel, uh, from writing by hand to typewriters to the internet. Uh, they are technology specialists. Um, but we know that the potential uh, exists today to use technology again uh, to change how we age. Um, so here we are. Here we go, and I just want to say thank you for uh, being a part of this uh, massive change in culture. Thank you for all of your help. So there is one more person I'd like to uh, have say, say a few words this morning. And uh, I've already hit my first uh, snag this morning, and there should have been a slide in the deck that isn't in the deck. Um, but it's just a logo. <laughs> But it's a pretty good logo. Um, so about, uh, I guess about a year and a half ago, uh, we started having some discussions with the President's Council for Fitness, Sports, uh, and, and Fitness, Sports and Nutrition um, in Washington, D.C. And you, know, you probably know these folks uh, as the people that have had you doing push-ups in grade school since the Eisenhower administration uh, with the Presidential Physical Fitness Challenge. Um, and we started having a discussion because they do, in fact, have a charter to help all Americans become uh, more active and more fit. Um, but much of the programming, historically, has been around K through 12. And we started having discussions around how we might help them um, define some things to do moving forward, and ended up last summer signing a memorandum of understanding between uh, the, the Consul and Stanford and the Center on Longevity to help do that. And, so they, of course, were very interested in this year's challenge as a mobility challenge and have been very involved in you know, judging it and defining it. Um, and in recognition of that today, I'm happy to uh, introduce Shelly Fole, who's the executive director of the council, who just came out here from Washington yesterday to, uh, to judge today and be part of this. And so Shelly, I'd like to have you say a few words about why the council might be involved here. Thank you, Ken, and thank you, Laura, and it's so great to be here. Um, we so appreciate our partnership with the Stanford Center on Longevity, and um, as, we, as Laura and I just said uh, in the back, like, this is just the beginning, right? Um, and as Ken, as Ken said, well, look, first of all, let's just back up. So how many of you remember us because of the test? <laughs> all right, most of you, all right? So, um, and, and as Ken said, you know, a lot of our work over these last 
almost 60 years now has been in the the, the uh, younger age group and you know doggone push-ups and sit-ups. I'm, I'm happy to say as an aside that we've actually changed um, the test uh, to be more health related now. So instead of testing kids on their athletic products, we're testing them on health related fitness, which I would think we would all agree is where we want to be, right? Um, so that's a new, uh, a new um, and improved effort on the youth side of things. And by the way, we also have an adult fitness test. So there's, there's still time, you can still get your patch. <laughs> we still got them. Um, before I forget to, I wanna acknowledge Hannah Torkelson, uh, also from my team, um, who's here and who leads all of our active aging efforts. Um, and so uh, she's been really working side by side with Ken and getting that doggone MOU signed. And uh, you know, it's not easy partnering with federal government as you might know, uh, but we, we got it done. And so again, we are off and running now. Um, congratulations to all of the um, finalists. I uh, can't wait to judge today. Uh, it's gonna be awesome, uh, but congratulations. You guys are already winners, um, and certainly in my eyes. Um, great work. Um, we, the, the council, uh, are very interested in doing more and more work in the active aging. We're partnering with Colin also with uh, I, ICAA. Um, we have folks on our council like Billie Jean King and um, a retired uh, general, Mark Hurtling, um, who will have us doing push ups at the drop of a hat, believe me. <laughs> Uh, but who's a, a great uh, role model and, um, and others, uh, certainly on our council, that we can use, utilize for our messaging and uh, to get um, the, the uh, messaging out that all of us are looking for in terms of creating a culture uh, that supports activity uh, and, uh, and vibrant living well into our years. Um, so thank you again. Uh, it's great to be here. Uh, this is just the beginning. I'm coming already uh, scheduled to come back in June for the workshop. Oh, we're so looking forward to that. Thank you to all of our sponsors, uh, Aging 2.0, all of the sponsors um, that, that made this possible and, and all of the things that are going on um, here at the center and in this uh, collective space. Um, as Ken said, our mission is to educate, engage, and empower all Americans to lead a healthy lifestyle. All Americans. And so um, we want to be in this space with you. We want to be impacting culture. Uh, we want to be creating a country, a nation, where we have adults that are living, um, again, vibrant, uh, vivacious, productive lives. Um, so I look forward to working with you to make sure that we're adding not only years to our life, but life to our years. Thank you.